All right. So that, that was a little collage that just shows you just how much was being reported on that day and nothing at, at the, you know, within days of all those different um, truck bomb reports. I don't know if you remember the day of um, the Capitol. It was reported that there was a truck bomb that hit the Capitol that was going around for a little while. So there was a lot of really questionable reports, people being detained. People being announced about their arrest, but never any follow through into what happened to these arrested and detained people. It's very true. Um, so what we we hit pause. So that was just sort of like a little collage, to show you how crazy the day was. But when we when we go back and, and listen to the other half of the clip, this is where we're going to hear about a woman who witnessed um, the four dancing Israelis. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's sort of their little title, but. This was um, a woman who had a view of the uh, World Trade Center area, and as she was watching the tragedy unfold, she looked down into the parking area below her apartment, and she saw a van set up uh, with a video camera, um, like on a tripod or something, and there were four um, Israeli men, and this, it was later, I don't know if they, she immediately identified them as Israelis, but she identified them as men who were videotaping the event, and She'll explain uh, their demeanor. So you can go ahead and hit pause. And all of a sudden, down there, I see this van park. And I see three guys on top of the van. And I could see that they were, like, happy. You know, they, 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 were, they didn't look shocked to me. You know, they didn't look shocked. I thought it was very strange. We had received an all-points bulletin, and uh, I just happened to see the van and, you know, hollered over to my lieutenant, you know, that I think that could be the van. We checked it out, and it was. You know, we were all on edge, obviously, so I really wasn't looking to make friends with these people, and neither were the officers that I were with. Once we started talking to them, you know, they were pretty much like, hey, you know, we're, you know, we're not against you, we're with you. And at that point, we were taken for another round of questioning, this time related to our allegedly being members of Mossad. The fact of the matter is, we are coming from a country that experiences terror daily. Our purpose was to document the event. Our purpose was to document the event. That's the end of that clip. So... Um, what we heard there was not only we saw the, the we heard the woman's uh, eyewitness account of the dancing Israelis and they were videotaping. They were being set up prior to the um, impact, so they, this wasn't something that they hastily threw together. They were ready prior to the um, attacks, and then the second half of that clip was them those same guys being through a translator uh, speaking through a translator. Those guys on Israeli TV, like um, kind of like a David Letterman type show is what it looked like, just sort of like an interview show. And they were talking about their experiences of being over there. They mentioned that they were, being, they, they were accused as being a Mossad. As Mossad. They, at no point in the interview did they deny being Mossad, and they say that they were there to document terrorism. All right, so what do you think? I mean, I guess it could be argued that they were into the whole terrorist plot and that they were just there to... To document it, perhaps, perhaps I don't, you know, to, to speculate. Um, I don't know. You don't want to speculate too much on Israel because that's when you know the, we'll start to hear uh, funny, funny clicks in our in our line here, and we'll <laughs> maybe the, right. the, the the station will get shut down or something. A bolt, magic bolt of lightning will hit yeah. us or something. I think the fact that they're Israeli is is quite interesting. Right. Um, I, we're kind of running out of time. I think we can do this last clip because here we are again. This is a good way to wrap up. And it's um, wh how do you how do you place blame? How do you do your investigation? Well, I, uh, the the best way to go is follow the money. You know who who's behind it? Follow the money. And this next clip is going to show us uh, a good way to follow the money. And before we before we follow the money, let's talk about the 9/11 Commission reports and what their impression of of follow the money was. Um, I'm paraphrasing here, but um, basically Tom Keene is on record as saying that the matter is, is of who funded the 9-11 attacks is of little practical importance. 
um, due to the fact that it costs so little. So that their rationale is, well, it really didn't cost that much money, so it's not really important to look back and see where that money came from. But we're going to hear where that money came from um, right now. Um, track 18 and just kind of let it roll. Suspected hijacker Mohammed Atta received wire transfers via Pakistan and then distributed the cash via money orders bought here in Florida. A senior law enforcement source tells CNN the man sending the money to Atta is believed to be Ahmed Umar Saeed Sheikh. He reportedly is controlling certain aspects of the financial transactions of the Al-Qaeda network. Once a standout student of the London School of Economics, the British-born son of Pakistani parents speaks five languages. In October of 2001, this was reported in most major newspapers. there I guess all right so uh, that one get a little cut off it was very hard to find any actual uh, audio on this but what what we have here is on September 10th again important date you have a hundred thousand dollars and again Tom Keen's on record is saying that the the whole operation cost under five hundred thousand dollars so you have easily one-fifth of the money that it re is required to um, pull off the 9-11 attacks being wired to Mohammed Atta and then he later took that wire transfer and distributed into smaller money orders for the um, uh, hijackers uh, but that wire transfer came through um, the Pakistani ISI under the direction of a man named Mahmoud Ahmed for, who was the head of the Pakistani ISI and the Pakistani ISI is their version of the CS, uh, CIA. They're basically the puppet group that the CIA works through in Pakistan. So you see a wire transfer of P CIA controlled ISI to Mohammed Atta on September 10th and if you want to talk about follow the money there it is. All right and uh, well it looks like the program's coming to a close here. Do you want to Let's mention some websites and some resources and things that people can follow up with. Um, I know 911truth.org is an excellent website. Um, Pilotsfortruth.org, of course. Uh, what's the website for uh, architects and engineers? Uh, I'm not 100%. I think it's A&E for 911truth. I'm not sure exactly what, what, the, um, what it is. I'll talk mm. about some books. Uh, sure. I mentioned the Terror Timeline. You can see it online. Or you can buy it in book form. I have it in book form. I highly recommend it. Um, for grassroots people, the book I'm really going to recommend because he's a guy just like us. This is a guy, Sandra Hicks. He's an independent journalist. He comes out of the DIY punk community. He's a hardcore kid just like us. And he wrote a book called The Big Wedding. And he is, I believe, affiliated with what's uh, Guerrilla News Network, GNN. Uh, so Sandra Hicks is a great guy to um, check out. He's the guy that I look to. He uncovered the... Um, Mahmoud Ahmed uh, wire transfer of $100,000 to Mohammed Atta. Um, the big book that is sort of the one, um, probably the most important one, anything by David Ray Griffin, his book The New Pearl Harbor is excellent, and he has, I think, at least two sequel books to that, um, The New Pearl Harbor. So David Ray Griffin, um, Stephen Jones, Richard Gage, um, Willie Rodriguez, check out anything by Willie Rodriguez. Go on Google and look up Willie Rodriguez, the hero of 9-11. He saved people on 9/11. He was the only. He got. He had the only key to um, one of the towers. He saved many, many, many people that day. And he was in the basement. He heard explosions. He saw people with their skin burned off. And he said that the explosions happened in the basement first, and then the planes hit. Check out Willie Rod Willie Rodriguez. All right. I want to thank uh, Bob for joining us tonight with excellent uh, material and insight. And uh, tune in next week to Mass Transition, 9 to 11 p.m. every Tuesday. We're going to leave you off with some Nation of Ulysses, Target USA. Yeah, All right. Thanks for joining us with the 9-11 uh, special edition. And uh, keep up the good fight and don't forget the all elite, of those people. The elite definitely fell. have a 13-point plan to destroy America. All right. I want to thank you for listening to Mass Transition tonight. 
And we've got Jay Magic with the Jambalaya up next. I want to thank uh, Bob. He actually um, texted me, and that's uh, one way my buddies can make pledges. But Bob, uh, who was my special guest on that program, actually called in with a $30 donation for a rad red Valley Free Radio t-shirt. So I'll be hooking him up with that. So to think that even guests on the show call up and donate, you can call up and donate to 4 and 3 5 8 5 1 0 3 3. And I also want to thank uh, Dana, um, who um, called in with some information um, how there is a local connection with 9 11. Um, a gentleman by the name of Jim Hoffman, who uh, did some work, uh, graduate work, I believe, at UMass, um, was involved with the WTC 7 investigation of 9-11 so a local connection there thanks to uh, Dana for that call and uh, maybe we can um, get either Jim Hoffman or or Dana to participate in next year's 9-11 show but uh, we have the jambalaya up next with Jay Magic. Jay Magic's in the studio I'm going to be uh, hanging out um, till about midnight and helping him out with the phone line so call in 413-585-1033 or tuned into Valley Free Radio 103.3 103.3 FM in Northampton, WXOJLP. Also streaming live at valleyfreeradio.org where you can go and make a uh, donation via PayPal. Um, and we've got some awesome gifts here. A $5 uh, 